the armed forces of the Democratic Republic of the Congo as the state organization responsible for defending the Democratic Republic of the Congo. The FARDC was rebuilt patchily as part of the peace process which followed the end of the Second Congo War in July 2003. The majority of FARDC members are land forces. But it also has a small air force and an even smaller navy. In 2010-2011 the three services may have numbered between 144,000 and 159,000 personnel. In addition, there is a presidential force called the Republican Guard. But it and the Congolese National Police are not part of the armed forces. The government in the capital city Kinshasa, the United Nations, the European Union, and bilateral partners which include Angola, South Africa, and Belgium are attempting to create a viable force with the ability to provide the Democratic Republic of Congo with stability and security. However, this process is being hampered by corruption, inadequate donor coordination, and competition between donors. The various military units now grouped under the FARDC banner are some of the most unstable in Africa after years of war and underfunding. To assist the new government, since February 2000 the United Nations has had the United Nations mission in the Democratic Republic of Congo, which currently has a strength of over 16,000 peacekeepers in the country. Its principal tasks are to provide security in key areas, such as the South Kivu and North Kivu in the east, and to assist the government in reconstruction. Foreign rebel groups are also in the Congo, as they have been for most of the last half century. The most important is the Democratic Forces for the Liberation of Rwanda, against which Laurent Nkunda's troops were fighting. But other smaller groups such as the anti-Ugandan Lords Resistance Army are also present. The legal standing of the FARDC was laid down in the Transitional Constitution. Articles 118 and 188. This was then superseded by provisions in the 2006 Constitution. Articles 187 to 192. Law 04023 of the 12th of November 2004 establishes the General Organization of Defense and the Armed Forces. In mid 2010, the Congolese Parliament was debating a new defense law, provisionally designated Organic Law 130. The first organized Congolese troops, known as the Force Public were created in 1888 when King Leopold II of Belgium, who held the Congo Free State as his private property, ordered his Secretary of the Interior to create military and police forces for the state. In 1908, under international pressure, Leopold ceded administration of the colony to the government of Belgium as the Belgian Congo. It remained under the command of a Belgian officer corps through to the independence of the colony. In 1960, throughout 1916 and 1917, the force public saw combat in Cameroon, and successfully invaded and conquered areas of German East Africa, notably present-day Rwanda. During World War I, elements of the force public were also used to form Belgian colonial units that fought in the East African campaign during World War II. At independence on 30 June 1960, the army suffered from a dramatic deficit of trained leaders particularly in the officer corps. This was because the force public had always only been officered by Belgian or other expatriate whites. The Belgian government made no effort to train Congolese commissioned officers until the very end of the colonial period, and in 1958, only 23 African cadets had been admitted even to the military secondary school. The highest rank available to Congolese was adjutant which only four soldiers achieved before independence. Though 14 Congolese cadets were enrolled in the Royal Military Academy in Brussels in May, they were not scheduled to graduate as second lieutenants until 1963. Ill-advised actions by Belgian officers led to an enlisted ranks rebellion on 5 July 1960, which helped spark the Congo crisis. Lieutenant General Emile Janssens, the force public commander, wrote during a meeting of soldiers that, before independence equals after independence, pouring cold water on the soldiers' desires for an immediate raise in their status. Historian Louis-François van der Straten says that on the morning of 8 July 1960, 
following a night during which all control had been lost over the soldiers. Numerous ministers arrived at Camp Leopold with the aim of calming the situation. Both Prime Minister Patrice Lumumba and President Joseph Kasavubu eventually arrived. And the soldiers listened to Kasavubu religiously. After his speech, Kasavubu and the ministers present retired into the camp canteen to hear a delegation from Thay. Soldiers, Van der Straten says that, according to Joseph Ilio, their demands included the following. The laborious discussions which then followed were later retrospectively given the label of an extraordinary ministerial council. Gerard Libwa writes that, dot, the special meeting of the Council of Ministers took steps for the immediate African.